The green beard effect is a thought experiment used in evolutionary biology to explain selective altruism among individuals of a species. The idea of a green beard allele was proposed by William D. Hamilton in his Articles of 1964, and got the name from the example used by Richard Dawkins, I have a green beard and I will be altruistic to anyone else with green beard. In The Selfish Gene 1976, a green beard effect occurs when an allele, or a set of linked alleles, produce three expressed or phenotypic effects. A perceptible trait the hypothetical, green beard, recognition of this trait by others, and preferential treatment of individuals with the trait the carrier of the gene or a specific allele is essentially recognizing copies of the same gene or a specific allele in other individuals. Whereas kin selection involves altruism to related individuals who share genes in a non-specific way, green beard alleles promote altruism toward individuals who share a gene that is expressed by a specific phenotypic trait. Some authors also note that the green beard effects can include spite for individuals lacking the green beard gene. This can have the effect of delineating a subset of organisms within a population that is characterized by members who show greater cooperation toward each other, this forming a clique that can be advantageous to its members who are not necessarily kin. Green beard effect could increase altruism on green beard phenotypes and therefore its presence in a population even if genes assist in the increase of genes that are not exact copies. All that is required is that they express the three required characteristics. Green beard alleles are vulnerable to mutations that produce the perceptible trait without the helping behavior. Altruistic behavior is paradoxical when viewed in the light of old ideas of evolutionary theory that emphasized the role of competition. The evolution of altruism is better explained through the gene-centered view of evolution, which emphasizes an interpretation of natural selection from the point of view of the gene which acts as an agent that has the metaphorical, selfish goal of maximizing its own propagation. A gene for behavioral selective altruism can be favored by natural selection if the altruism is primarily directed at other individuals who share the gene. Since genes are invisible, such an effect requires perceptible markers for altruistic behavior to occur. Topic. Examples Evolutionary biologists have debated the potential validity of green beard genes, suggesting that it would be extraordinarily rare for a single or even a set of linked genes to produce three complex phenotypic effects. This criticism has led some to believe that they simply cannot exist or that they only can be present in less complex organisms, such as microorganisms. Several discoveries within the past ten years have illuminated the validity of this critique. The concept remained a merely theoretical possibility under Dawkins' selfish gene model until 1998, when a green beard allele was first found in nature, in the red imported fire ant Solenopsis invicta. Polygyne colony queens are heterozygous B -flat at the GP9 gene locus. Their worker offspring can have both heterozygous B -flat and homozygous BB genotypes. The investigators discovered that homozygous dominant BB queens, which in the wild form produce monogyne rather than polygyne colonies, are specifically killed when introduced into polygyne colonies, most often by heterozygous B flat and not homozygous BB workers. They concluded that the allele GP9B is linked to a greenbeard allele which induces workers bearing this allele to kill all queens that do not have it. A final conclusion notes that the workers are able to distinguish BB queens from B flat queens based on an odor cue. The gene CSA in the slime mold Dictyostelium discoideum, discovered in 2003, codes for a cell adhesion protein which binds to GP80 proteins on other cells, allowing multicellular fruiting body formation on soil. Mixtures of CSA knockout cells with wild type cells yield spores. Born. From the fruiting bodies, which are 82% wild type WT. 
This is because the wild type cells are better at adhering and more effectively combine into aggregates, knockout co cells are left behind. On more adhesive but less natural substances, co cells can adhere, WT cells, still better at adhering, sort preferentially into the stock. In 2006, green beard like recognition was seen in the cooperative behavior among color morphs in side blotched lizards. Although the traits appear to be encoded by multiple loci across the genome, a more recent example, found in 2008, is a gene that makes brewers' yeast clump together in response to a toxin such as alcohol. By investigating flocculation, a type of self-adherence generally present in asexual aggregations, Smikala et al. showed that S. cerevisiae is a model for cooperative behavior evolution. When this yeast expresses FLO1 in the laboratory, flocculation is restored. Flocculation is apparently protective for the FLO1 plus cells, which are shielded from certain stresses ethanol, for example. In addition FLO1 plus cells preferentially adhere to each other. The authors therefore conclude that flocculation is driven by this greenbeard allele. A mammalian example appears to be the reproductive strategy of the wood mouse, which shows cooperation among spermatozoa. Single sperms hook in each other to form sperm trains, which are able to move faster together than single sperm would do. It has been suggested that speciation could be possible through the manifestation of a green beard effect. It has also been pointed out that both the biological and cultural aspects of language are bestowed with green beard recognition systems, thus providing insights into the evolution of language. Topic. See also Maternal effect dominant embryonic arrest the Medea gene, an example of intergenerational gene self-selection, whereby a gene present in a mother organism selectively terminates offspring that do not receive that gene. Red dress effect